Hey YouTube and welcome back to Beanie Games. Today we'll be continuing our series on solving the Sudoku puzzle hunt. Thanks to everyone who's been supporting the channel and watching our videos. Uh, I'd also like to once again thank Simon and Mark from Cracking the Cryptic for hosting this puzzle hunt. They've released their own Sudoku puzzle hunt a couple of days ago and I can't recommend it enough. But with regards to this uh, Sudoku puzzle hunt, we've only got two puzzles left now and today's video will be solving one of my favourite puzzles of the collection. If anyone still hasn't tried the puzzle hunt, I strongly recommend you do so. The link uh, to the Patreon page where it's hosted can be found below. Now let's get on to the puzzle. Last time on the channel we solved Hostile Killer and we still have the saved solution grid um, here. Once again I've added the circles that we're going to need to pass on to our next um, puzzle and we only have two left to choose from. Um, and it's going to be quite clear that our next puzzle is forged letters. Uh, that's because once again we only have um, six circled clues and that's not going to be enough for us to solve hypocrisy. Uh, as we've discussed before, for a classic Sudoku you need at least 17 clues in the grid for you to reach a solution. That is unique. Um, so we will be going on to forged letters. Um, so we'll open that one up in a new tab and we have quite a lot of rules to go through um, with this one. Um, so we have normal Sudoku rules apply however each digit has been replaced by a letter. The queen rule applies to the letter representing 9 i.e. that letter must appear at most once in any given diagonal. Digits must strictly increase, both alphabetically and numerically, along each thermometer from the bulb. In addition, killer cage and sandwich clues have been provided with digits replaced by their respective letters. I.e. if D represented 8 and E represented 9, then DE would be 89. A killer cage, colour group of cells, may not contain repeated digits and its digits must sum to the small number in its corner. Um, for example, the first five cells on row 1 must sum to DO. A sandwich clue indicates the sum of the digits between the 1 and the 9 in a given row or column. So, what makes this, I suppose, my favourite puzzle in this collection is that we've kind of combined lots of the variants that we've um, had to learn about throughout this puzzle hunt, including uh, the Queen's Rule from Lascivious Queens, our um, sandwich clue from Hungry for Sandwiches, our killer, killer cages from Hostile Killer, and our thermometers from A Raging Temperature. Um, so we also get given these digits here, um, I and Dante, um, which uh, we might go back over towards the end of this video. Um, the other thing that I really like is that um, Mark, in his uh, overview of the solutions to the Sudoku hunt, did note and appreciate the clues um, that are given in the letters here. So we get Odrat, Odia, and then along the killer cages you can see that the clues read Don't Fear Dead. Um, and once again that's going to be clear once we get to the end of the puzzle, when we get, uh, we understand Dante and whatever other words we find in this grid um, about the theme and, and what, what this puzzle hunt um, is referring to. Now I might just colour in the killer cages here just to make them a bit more obvious to see. Um, yellow, this one can be orange. Okay, and I'm also going to keep track um, of the lettered version of this Sudoku grid over here um, just because that's going to be helpful for us to keep track of what letters mean what number um, and also if there's lettered clues that we need as opposed to just the uh, numbers that are available in the Cracking the Cryptic software. So we're going to put in uh, the first numbers that we're given from this circle clues. So we get a 195 3, 9, and an 8. Alright, so um, let's get cracking now on, on this puzzle. 
So, let's start with these two killer cages down here. So, we get two killer cages here, each with four numbers each. One uh, given the clue DE, and one given the clue AD. Now, the thing to note here is that the maximum value you can have in a four cell killer cage is 30. And that's six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, but obviously we have um, been given nine letters here that must represent the digits one through nine. So we won't be able to have any of these cages be a 30. They can be at most 29. Um, and because they're both two digit clues, we can then work out that A and D must be one and two in some order. Okay, um, so A, let's put A or D. Alright, sorry about that. I think we've had some technical difficulties there. Um, so just coming back. Uh, so we were on uh, looking at these clues down here. And we had uh, D, E and A, D. And we'd worked out that A and D had to be um, 1 and 2 in some order. Um, so I'm just going to put um, A and D uh, in those two spots. Um, and then I was trying to explain uh, how this box over here is going to resolve that for us. So uh, this box over here, um, so we know the digits 1 through 9 sum up to 45. Um, so we have 1, 9 and 5 already in the box. That gives us 15. So these six cells have to add up to 30. This grey cell here, which I've highlighted and unfortunately probably won't come across in the video um, very well, um, has to have the digit, a digit between 1 and 9. Um, and so no matter what we subtract from 30, um, whether that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9, uh, this AR box here is going to be 20 something. Um, so as a result, that's going to give us that A is 2 and D is 1. Okay, so we can now put in, uh, we can get rid of this grey cell now actually, I'll get rid of that. I'll put the 1 in over the top of the D and the 2 over the top of the A. Um, and just for our um, lettered puzzle, we will also make sure we have the letters um, here for us to read. Okay, so um, we've worked out that D is 1, A is 2. Um, we can then work out, so we have D and A, uh, D, E plus A, D. So these um, boxes here add up to 30 and then 1 plus E um, plus this cell here. So 1 plus E plus this cell here um, need to add up to 15. So E is going to have to be, so this cell can be at most a 9, 1 plus 9. So E can be, has to be at least 5. E will be um, 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9. Um, I suppose we can add that um, over there. Actually, that's not very clear, so maybe we'll just keep that in mind. But it, actually here, maybe I'll just make that 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9 over the top of that E. Okay. Um, now, other things that we can note, this F value here is going to be greater than 3 because we've got a 2 cell killer cage and we already have a 3 in it. Um, another thing that we can do is look at this NT cage up here. So, uh, we already have a 1 and a 2 in it. Um, this is, has to have 7 digits in it and it can't uh, so it's going to be excluding 2 digits. The minimum that it can exclude will be a 3 and a 4 um, which sums to 7. So the maximum 
uh, the yeah maximum value that uh, n t can have is 38. We already know that n is not one or two, um, so n will, t will be at least 30, 3, 34, somewhere between 34 and 38. Um, and so either way, n is going to be the number 3. So we can put a 3 in here. Okay. Um, because we now know that n is the letter 3, we can put an n here in our given uh, spot, just to keep track of that as well. Actually, you can make that a d as well, because we know 1 is d. Okay. Um, so we now have three of the numbers, uh, three of the letters worked out. Six to go. Okay. Um, next thing for us to do might be let's maybe try and use the queen rule. So we have some nines in the grid. Um, we don't know which which letter they represent, but we might be able to um, see if they force some positions anywhere in the grid. So this 9 rules out a 9 from those three cells. This 9 rules one out from these three cells. By Queen's rule, it actually also rules out along the diagonal up here. This 8 can't be a 9, um, and that's uh, just by normal Sudoku. So we're left with a 9 appearing in one of the, these two cells. Um, and because this is a thermometer, um, which has to work with both letters and numbers, a 9 could never appear in this cell. So we're going to be able to place a 9 there. Okay, that's going to force a 9 into one of these two cells. And that's because these two 9s rule out these 6, and this 9 also rules out this one along the diagonal. Alright, we might have a look at this centre box and see where a 9 can go. This 9 rules out those three cells. This 9 rules out the middle two here. This 9 along the diagonal rules out that cell. Um, and one other thing, so this 9, uh, this purple cell here can't be a 9 because then F would be 12, which isn't possible. Um, so, we're left with one of these two cells for the 9. Okay. Um, we might have a look up the top here. Uh, so, this cell can't be a 9. Look along the diagonal. That's the same cell ruled out. That's not particularly helpful at all. We get one of those four corner cells being a 9. Um, but we can rule out this cell here. Um, because if this cell was a 9, then there'd be nowhere to place a 9 in box 1. So, we can get rid of that one. We're left with three options. Okay. Um, if we look at this box over here, uh, this 9's ruled out the top three cells, this 9's ruled out the bottom three, and this diagonal hasn't ruled anything out, so one of those cells in the middle is going to be the 9. Okay, and maybe this cell. Can't have a 9 along there, can't have a 9 up here by this queen, this nine's queen's rule. Uh, this green cell can't be a nine, and that's because e would then be greater than uh, ten, uh, or greater than nine, at the very least, um, which is also not possible. Um, so we get a nine locked into one of those three cells. Okay, and this nine, this cell here now has quite a bit of power because this sees all three of those options. Uh, it sees this one by Queen's Rule and those two by regular Sudoku. 
Um, so as a result, this one can't be a 9. Otherwise, we'd then have nowhere to place a 9 in box 6. That forces that one to become a 9. You can get rid of the 9 here. Seize that one by normal Sudoku and this one by Queen's Rule. So that forces a 9 up the top. It means that one can't be a 9. That's now a 9. Um, and so we know E can no longer be 9. Um, and that should hopefully resolve our last couple of 9s. Let's see. This one uh, sees this cell on the diagonal. Um, this one's ruled out by normal Sudoku, so we can take place a 9 there. That's going to see both of these cells here, one by normal Sudoku and one by Queen's Rule. Um, so we can place a 9 in the center digit there. That's we're going to rule out those two. This 9 also rules out the T. Uh, so we get a 9 there. And then we have all the 9s placed in the grid. We just don't know which letter they represent. Okay, that's actually going to make this um, box down here a lot easier because uh, we've already worked out that A is 2, D is 1, and we now have the 9, which is that extra cell, um, to make this box add up to 45. Um, so D, E, A, D, uh, 21, 31, 40. 40 plus E have to equal 45. It's only one spot for that. That means that E is going to be the letter, the number 5. Okay, we also have a 5 over here, so we can place an E there. And now we have a bit more work to do. Okay. Um, what's the next thing for us to do? I suppose the next thing might be to look at this top row. So, we have a 9 in the grid, which means we can start using our sandwich clues. Um, we know DE has the value 15. Um, Actually, I suppose we could start there, really. We know D is 1, E is 5. Um, and where can a 1 go in this column? Well, we already have a 1 in the top box, so it can't be in either of those cells. It can't be here, because this is not the bulb of the thermometer. And if you placed a 1 in either of those two cells, it would be too close to the 9. So you wouldn't be able to get 7 and 8 between it. Um, so, I believe that's going to force the 1 into that cell there. We're going to need a 7 and an 8 um, but to resolve that. And this 8 is going to um, fix the order for those. Alright, so now we've been able to use that DE clue. we place placed another couple of digits into the grid. In fact, we've only got three cells left in this column. It's 4, 5 and 6. We can place that triple there. Okay. Um, now, is there any... Uh, oh, I suppose we can also use this E killer cage. Um, now that we know that E is 5, we know that green cells here are going to be either 1 and 4 and two, or 2 and 3. Um, this cell can't be a 1 or a 3, so this is going to be the 2 or the 4, and that's going to be the 1 or the 3. I don't know if that's that much help at the moment, but at least we can restrict those cells a little bit. Alright, um, this AR clue, we still don't know what R is, so I don't know how helpful that's going to be. Um, but let's use this O clue. Uh, that might be helpful. So, uh, we know O is some value between 1 and 9. It can't be 1, 2, 3, or 5. Um, but either way, it's a single uh, digit. The maximum distance 
you can have um, between a 1 and a 9 with a single digit clue is 3 cells um, and that's because 2, th uh, two plus 3 plus 4 make 9. So at the most we could have a 1 here if it went this way. If it went that way I don't think there's a restriction. The 1 could be in either of those two cells. Um, I suppose the question is DO. So whatever value this is, you need five cells to add up to it. Uh, the minimum you can get in a five cell killer cage is one, two, three, four, and five, and that's going to make 15. Um, but obviously we know O is not 5 because that's E, so we're going to need O to be 6, 7, 8 or 9. Um, so the maximum this value could be is 19. To add that 9 makes 28. I think that might be more restricted. I don't know, maybe you can't have the 1 on this side. Um, anyway, we'll at least have a look on where a 1 can go in each box now. So, the 1 can't go here. It could go in either of those cells. Um, the only other option for the box would be there. Um, because this uh, yellow cage already has a 1 in it. And we know that I is not 1. Okay, I suppose if this was to be a 1, you'd need that to be 2, 3, and 4. But that would be impossible because you already have a 2 and a 3 in this box. So how would you be able to place 2, 3, and 4? Um, there, you couldn't. So that can't be a 1, I don't think. Alright, so... If the 1 goes to the left, it, it's here for this 9, and the minimum value it could be would be a 4 and a 5, because we already have a 1, 2, 3 in this box. So the minimum value for O would be 9, and that would be a 4 and a 5 here, and a 1 there. Um, but can a 1 go here? I don't see why not currently. I might have to come back to that. I suppose the question is, can this ever be a 6? I think the answer is, uh, if that's not a 1, it doesn't matter, does it? But how do you make that add up? Um, I might have to come back to that. I feel like there's something there, I just can't work it out at the moment. Okay, um, we can maybe look at the other O clue, which we still haven't worked out its value. But obviously the 1 can't go here or anywhere along this um, thermometer, so the 1 would have to be here uh, if it was went to the right. If it went to the left, um, it could be in any of those three cells actually couldn't be down the bottom because of that one there. Hmm. You get a three forced into those cells. Hmm. You might be getting a point in which I need to use one of the other clues. Alright, um, maybe we'll have to have a look at this thermometer. Um, so, the, uh, oh, I can place a D here as well. Not that that helps that much at the moment. Um, so we still need the letters 
I'll just place these here for reference. Um, T I F R and O. Is that right? Yeah, so we've still got five letters to place and we need them to alphabetically and numerically increase along this thermometer. Um, so this D here means that we can't use an A or the value 2 anywhere along these thermometers. This has a minimum value of 4. Um, we know E is 5. So E and 5 is actually still good here. Um, Is there enough for us to then work out what these two are? I think we're going to have to find out the numerical value of these numbers before they become more helpful. Um, I suppose if we put them in alphabetical order, it comes F, I, uh, O, R, T. So R and T I suppose T we know is not 9, so this can't be 9, and these can't be T then, um, because O would have a value, um, or whichever value the 9 is, um, can't be uh, beyond T along the thermometer. So these can't be T. Maybe I will come back to this DO box. Two, three, two. If this didn't include a one, what would it include? Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six is twenty which we can't actually have. Okay, so there we go. Then we can force a one somewhere in this box. Otherwise, we won't be able to make this DO clue work. So we forced, and through the logic we worked out earlier, we forced the one to be there. All right, there we go. That's going to be helpful a lot. That's going to force a one down here as well. Um, and now the minimum value these two cells can be is um, 4 and 5, so we now know that O is 9. That's going to help a lot, I think. Alright, let's get rid of these over here on the lettered grid, just because now we can place all the O's in the puzzle. Oh, 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 oh. And we can add that D there, the D there. Okay. Uh, can't have a one here. What's that one doing? Oh, maybe I've incorrectly assumed that can be a 1. Maybe let's wait on that. So we were saying, if the 1 goes to the right, it'll be here. If it goes to the left, it'll be there. Okay. 
we can still work with that. Uh, so we now have a 4-5 pair up here. Um, that forces that one to become the 6. We can exclude a 6 from there. So we've got 4-5. Uh, this should leave us with a 7-8 pair there. Um, we need a 1 in one of these two cells. And in fact, we're going to need a 1 in one of those two cells. So where can a 1 go? And the reason the 1 can't go here is because there's no way to get DR in two cells. Um, particularly because this is a 4 or a 5. Um, R would have to be at least 4. You'd have to get... The maximum you could put here is 5 and... Oh, 4 and 5. You can't have F greater than... F, F has to be at maximum 8. So actually, this cell might be more restricted than I thought as well. It can't be a 1, can be a 2, can't be a 3, can be a 4 or a 5. But it can't be a 6. Well, I Alright, so that's helpful. So the maximum this could be is 9, so there's no way you get a 1 in that cell there. So you can't have a 1 anywhere along there, so you're going to get a 1 in one of those two cells. Alright, there we go. We can now take the 1 away from that. We know the 1 now has to go to the left for this O clue down the bottom. Alright, and a bit more progress. Um, I suppose the other thing we can actually show is this actually can't be a 2. Uh, because if this was a 2, then F and... Uh, so 3 and 2 make 5. Um, and so F and E would then have the same value, which is impossible. So that's actually... Can't be a 2. There's a 4, 5 pair. Um, so F is going to be 7 or 8. Um, but either way, that might help us. So this is... an this is going to sum to 9. We're going to need, we need 2, 6, 7, and 8 in the box. You know, 2s can't be that high on the thermometer. Uh, because this is a 7 or an 8, this one can't be an 8. Otherwise, that thermometer will break. Alright. And so we get a 2 down the bottom here. We're going to get a 2 up to the top. We're going to get a 2 in the middle. Alright. Have we made some progress on this NT box? Uh, we've got 9 and 6 makes 15, plus 5 is 20, 23. Uh, we needed to make at least 34. Um, that with an 8. So if this is a 7 and an 8, what else do we have? We can have 3, 4, 7, 8. This one can't be an 8. Alright, so can this be a 7 and an 8, I suppose is the question. Yeah, that would be okay. That would be 38. Actually, this one can't be a 7 because we have a 7, 8 pair here. So, that's going to be a 3 or a 4. Okay. Um, 4 and 8 make 12, with the 33 that we already, uh, we don't have 33, so we've got 23, 15, 20, 23, uh, we couldn't add 12, that would make uh, 35, and E has already taken up 5, so, but you could have 8 and 3, you could have 7 and 4, could you have 7 and 3, no, you couldn't have 7 and 3. So, I think this is going to force T to become a 4. Um, we're going to have to, no matter what, have 34 be the sum. Um, so we've got, we've got 23 already given. If we added 8 and 4, we'd get 35, which we can't have. If we add 8 and 3, we'd get 34. If we added 7 and 4, we'd get 34. If we added 7 and 3, we'd get 33, which we can't 
have either because this is not nn. Um, so that's going to force t to be 4. All right, get another digit there. That's going to force a 2 down there for e. Um, that was the letter A. Uh, this green box is now resolvable. That's going to place a 3 there because 2 and 3 make 5. That's an N. Um, that's going to force this cell to be the 1. It's going to make that one a 1. pair here. So this can be 6, 7, or 8. This is 9. That's 12. This has to be less than 20. It has to be less than 19, actually. So can't be a 7 or an 8 here. That has to be a 6. Um, so we've got 9 plus 9, 18. We now know R is 8. And so we can place some of those R's in the grid. Okay. Um, so we've left with an F and an I, I think. Um, yeah, so we've worked out that T couldn't be on this thermometer. Um, but that's because it's the last letter alphabetically in our set. Um, so this cell here can't be a T. Um, so it can't be a 4. That's going to have to be a 5. It's going to force that one to become a 4. And I think that's going to resolve our letters now because we've got F is 7. And that's going to give I as 6. I, uh, this is an E, that's a T, um, I think this one can't be an 8 now, is that right? Um, D, E, R is after O in the alphabet, so this one can't be an 8, so we're going to get a 6-7 pair, forces a 2-8 pair down the bottom. Um, this must be resolvable somehow, uh, might have to get back to it. Oh, this 5 up here is going to sort out that 4 and that 5, uh, so we're going to get a T and an E, oops, there, oh, I missed a D, it's a bit hard to keep track of both uh, puzzles, this is an I, that was an F, alright, Um, Alright, now that we know what AR is, that's going to be 28. We've got a 9 here. Um, so we need 7 to be the outer of the sandwich, uh, outside the crust. So, a 1 has to be in one of these two cells. Um, but if a 1 was here, we'd then need 7 outside the crust, uh, which can't be possible. We've already got a 7 there. Um, so that's going to have to be a 1. And that's going to have to be summed to 7. We've already got a 3 and a 4. We can't use 1 and 6, so it's going to have to be a 2-5 pair. That's going to resolve everything up above it. That's 8, 7, 6. 3, 2, 7, 8. And that's actually going to resolve this. Yeah, I think that had to be a 3 now. So let's make sure we've got those N. Oh, that not work. N. 
And we do, we can see that D-E-F-R and D-E-I-O are both alphabetically and numerically uh, in order. Alright, uh, I did need to add a D down here. Uh, that actually forces a 1 into that cell there. This is a three, four, six triple. One, two, three, four, eight pair. Five, seven pair. And that's actually resolvable. Seven, five. That's E, F. So we need three, four, and six. This is going to be two, five, and I know two, seven, eight. Um, and actually, we now know that AR is twenty-eight. Um, these six cells had to add up to thirty. That's going to force that one to be the two. All right, it's fifteen, twenty-five, twenty-eight. Yep, that works well. We need these to add up to 9 now as well, because we've got 10 already in the cage. Um, so we need to be, so it can't be 1 and 8, it can be 2 and 7, it can't be 3 and 6, it can't be 4 and 5. Alright, so we've got a 2, 7 pair. That gives us 3, 6 and 8 at the top here. This one can't be a 6, that one can't be a 3. Uh, this is going to be a 7-8 pair, uh, which is going to resolve. That's going to be the 8, that's going to be the 7. Uh, and that resolves because of these, this 2-7 pair or this 3-6-8 triple. Uh, we can use either one there to resolve that. Uh, F. That one's going to need to be a 2. That's going to be 4 and 5. And once again, I think we're going to be able to use this thermometer to disambiguate um, because T is, once again, the last letter in the alphabet for our set of letters. Um, so T can't become before the R. That's going to have to be a 5, and that's going to have to be a 4. That's actually going to resolve this in there. That's so F R A. Uh, four and six in this column force that one to become a three. Get rid of the three from both of those cells. Place it in there. Seven. This one can't be a seven. Get a two five pair. It's going to mean these are three four six. Actually, this seven up here is resolved. Those that might help as well. Um, a and F. Three more digits for this column, four, six, and seven. 
Alright, I think we're going to now need these boxes. So we need to make this 15 in four cells. And uh, we can't use a one. So if we look at the minimum value, two, three, four, and five, that gets us 14. So two, three, four, and six is going to be what we have to place in these cells. Um, neither of those can be the two. Um, so that's going to force a two in the middle. Get a three, four, six, triple. Four, six already in this column. Places a three there. Uh, this 4-6 pair looks up at this 4-8 cell, so that's going to force that to be that way around. I'm going to get rid of an 8. Uh, this 4-6 pair also rules out a 6 from that option there. So we can resolve those up there. What are we left with down here? We've got 5, 7 and 8 in some order. That's going to exclude from the bulb of the thermometer. Two, five. Can't have a three here anymore. Okay, and we might have to look alphabetically again at this option. Actually, the seven and the eight uh, force that one to become a five. And this is a thermometer, so that's going to have to have a 7 and an 8 in that order. Uh, let's quickly fix the letter version of our solution grid. Got a four six pair, that's gonna make that one the seven. Okay, we got kind of a dangerous looking solution here. Um, we still haven't really used these clues very well. The AT is uh, twenty-four. We have fifteen 20, that's going to make that one the 4, 6, 4, and uh, this O clue has to, this has to be 9, uh, that's actually going to have to be 3 and 6 in that order. Alright, 6, 4. So we can check our number grid. Looks good to me. Uh, let's make sure we've got the right letters in. So I, that one's a T. F, T, I, T. I N I N T. All right, and then we have our solution grid with uh, the letter version. Now there is this red arrow in the corner which I haven't referenced yet, um, and we might make that a bit more obvious now. So I might highlight those Dante cells that we had given to us. And the other ones I'm going to highlight are going to be this diagonal right here. All right. And so with the diagonal, uh, excluding the first and last digits, um, but obviously if you tried to read down the diagonal, which is where that arrow points, you'd see the word inferno. Um, and if any of you are familiar with uh, 
that, you might recognize Dante's Inferno as um, a relatively well-known piece of writing, um, part of the Divine Comedy. And the other thing you might note, if you just got onto the Wikipedia page, is that there are nine circles of hell. Limbo, lust, gluttony, greed, wrath, heresy, violence, um, fraud, and when we get there, treachery. And so if we add our um, titles into our table grid that we've been keeping a track of, you might also note that the orders in which we've been doing the puzzles are in fact the orders, uh, the order of the nine circles of hell. Um, so for those of you who at the start of the puzzle hunt found uh, Dante's Inferno and discovered the nine circles of hell, you would have seen that these titles yeah, seemingly help you um, this find the order, or at least match up to limbo, lust, gluttony, greed, wrath, heresy, violence, fraud, and treachery. Um, and so here with this uh, puzzle we can finally see that we've discovered the um, theme of the puzzle, and that definitely seems to hold true for what we've solved so far. Um, the only other thing to add is that we should probably still keep track of our hash cells. Um, this one here is an R in the solution, um, so we might add an R there. Um, and once again, we still have these asterisk cells which we haven't worked out what to do with yet. Um, but, yeah, so congratulations for everyone who worked out the theme of the puzzle hunt before uh, discovering it in, in the forged letters puzzle. Um, for those of you who did disco discover it uh, only after you'd solved the eighth puzzle, um, I hope you enjoyed the reveal. Um, we will come back and... Uh, do another video doing the final puzzle, Hypocrisy, um, as well as finding the final solution to this puzzle hunt. Um, but thanks again for watching. Sorry for some of those technical difficulties at the start. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Stay subscribed so you can uh, find out when our last video will be released. And please leave a comment in the description, or uh, a comment down below to let me know what you thought of the solve today, um, as well as what you thought of the puzzle hunt. I'd love to hear your feedback. Alright, thanks!